Hello everyone and welcome back. Hopefully you feel the urge to subscribe. I am coming you to you today with exciting news. We got a new cat. His name is Bourbon. Want to see him? Bourbon! <laughs> okay, he's provided his input. We are going to be discussing something super fun today. Sensory review in terms of vestibular and proprioceptive behaviors, seeking, and activities. The first thing that I'm going to do is apologize for the glare. I don't know how to get that thing gone, to be honest with you guys. Let's see. But then you can't read it. Ah. Okay. The first thing that I want to start with is the cup analogy. Now, if you recall from school, we learned about the cup analogy in terms of our senses. And I just want to reiterate that. The first thing that we're going to discuss is a high need, so the person is under-responsive. With an individual that's under-responsive, you are providing some input. They have input here. Maybe they were playing on the playground. They were jumping up and down. And they keep doing activities that requires a lot of sensory input so that they can fill up their cup and that way they're able to focus on other things such as the classroom tasks, maybe completing their homework at home. So they need a lot of heavy work in order to feel satisfied so that they can focus and regulate their senses. Now an individual that is over responsive they have a teeny tiny cup i unfortunately am a victim of this at times so i'm going to use an analogy with myself work's been overwhelming so i've got all of work right here and then i'm coming home and i realize i need to go to the grocery store and the kids are loud i get to the grocery store and there's a lot of people there's noise there's chaos trying to find a cart trying to get the food, trying to control a toddler, and before I know it, I am overfilling and overwhelmed. My senses are going haywire. So when an individual is over-responsive and their cup fills up fast, what you want to do is you want to eliminate the opportunity for their cup to fill fast, allowing them to have some one-on-one -on -one time, Maybe completing a task individually without the other peers around can help them to self-regulate and minimize the amount of sensory input in their cups so that they can complete activities with others. Quiet time does me wonders, I'm telling you. <laughs> the next thing we have is a sensory seeker. Now this person, no matter how hard they work, how much input they get, they just cannot feel filled. This would be the mom that goes, I just sat two hours at the playground with you. How are you jumping around like crazy? You should be pooped by now. So Jimmy has been jumping up and down on the swings and he's been riding the slide, running like crazy, and he keeps doing all of this input, but yet his cup isn't getting filled because we've got a hole here. So every time his, he's receiving some input, it's quickly going out and he's needing more and he cannot get satisfied because it keeps pouring out. This is where heavy work is crucial. Crab walks, anything that allows a child to have some deep pressure input so that they can regulate themselves. It's not going to be a long-term fix, but it will allow them to be able to gain self-control so they can complete a task that you ask of them, like sitting still. This is why having therapy within the school is beneficial, because it helps the teachers change the way they run their classroom in order to benefit every child. So here is the cup analogy, people. We're moving over from our sensory review. I want to make sure that you can see this full thing. The first thing we're going to go over is 
vestibular. Now, if an individual has avoiding behaviors, they will be afraid of movement activities. They're not going to want to swing on the swing, ride on a seesaw, or merry-go-round. I don't even know if they still have those at the playgrounds. Uh, they're going to be fearful to play at the playground and possibly of elevators. So you'll notice that that child will like to spend a lot of time by themselves. They may appear to be clumsy or disorganized. They also may be interpreted as stubborn because their unwillingness to do the activities and they potentially could avoid stairs. When they are seeking vestibular input, you will notice they're unable to sit still. They're constantly moving. They'll be viewed as impulsive. They prefer to run everywhere. And they like to take unsafe risks. These are the children that are jumping off of the top of a slide. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> they also will prefer to be upside down. They want that freedom feeling and just being very adventurous as we interpret them in today's time. With children that are vestibular seeking, whether it's avoiding or seeking, so they have a vestibular need, you want to encourage them to swing. You also want to do a bikes or tricycle. Trampolines is beneficial for both vestibular and proprioceptive input. Hanging upside down the freeze game, so that whole stop, go, freeze, nice stop and go allows them to be able to regulate and it's fun spinning I love spinning one of the things that I can think of that incorporates swinging and spinning would be a platform swing I'm a big fan because you could do so many different things on that I have the child sit crisscross swing them back and forth then spin them around give them three bean bags and have them throw it at a target and it's fun for them. They don't even realize they're receiving vestibular input. And that is the best thing. Right. Let's move over to proprioceptive. Okay. I apologize for this glare. I don't know how to get this thing off of here. <laughs> that kind of works. But I want you to be able to read it. <sighs> so, and child that is avoiding... Proprioceptive input may appear to be lazy or lethargic. They could be considered a picky eater. They will avoid activities that are very active, like you've noticed in the vestibular. They also struggle with stairs. They avoid touches. They don't want anyone to touch them. There's no hugs. They may seem uncoordinated. They also require visual aid for familiar activities. Now, a child that's seeking proprioceptive input, they will run into people and objects. They use extreme force. So these are the kids that will run really, really fast and crash into the wall. Or they will stand on top of the couch and jump onto a beanbag because they're using extreme force to get that deep pressure input. They may also have poor body awareness. They can show behaviors such as kicking and biting and hitting people. They also may struggle with personal space. They prefer to wear tight clothing because they want something that's restricting, that's tight on them so that they're getting that input. They also may have a behavior of chewing on their fingers, clothing, items. I just realized I spelled fingers wrong. <laughs> for an activity, for an individual that is seeking proprioceptive or avoiding, you want to use bear hugs. The number one thing that I recommend for bear hugs is a time. If the child avoids behaviors, has an avoidance behavior, just Bringing them into a bear hug isn't beneficial. It may frighten them more. So what I say is, when I did my clinicals, I said, let's do a five-second bear hug, and I would count to five. So if the child is avoiding a touch, they know there is an end to it. Massages. You can use a sensory brush, provide some joint compressions, or you could just use a deep finger massage to get that input for the child. Animal walks, bear walk, crab walks, anything to get that really deep pressure and heavy work. Trampolines, they're great for both. You get a trampoline, people. <laughs> Needing the um, Play-Doh. So 
Again, if you think about it, that's a lot of heavy work with your hand. You're really having to use those joints, use those muscles. And yoga stretches. I can't do yoga, but I can print a picture of yoga stretches. (laughs) So here is my sensory review on vestibular and proprioceptive, as well as my attempt to the cup analogy. Happy studying. Subscribe. Let me know if there's any other video that you feel is needed. Pray for me because my test is coming up soon, people. Happy studying.